Welcome, in this video we're going to be talking about waves. We'll use this toy to explain how different waves are formed. So the first type of wave that we're going to create is longitudinal waves. And that's by pulling on the slinky string and then pulling back a little bit, then pulling back a lot, followed by a small amount, and once again by a lot. Now in these areas we have compression, and you can see that the strings are closer together. And then we also have areas where the strings are further apart, and these are called refractions. Now notice the wave is moving this way, and so are the vibrations. They are parallel, and as a result, this is called a longitudinal wave. So by definition, a longitudinal wave is when the direction of the wave and the direction of the vibrations are parallel. And examples include sound waves or P waves, which are a type of seismic wave, a wave that is created during earthquakes. Now it's important to remember that waves transfer energy and not matter. For example, when speaking to a microphone, you create sound waves, and these waves transfer energy which gets absorbed by the microphone. However, they don't transfer matter, and had they transferred matter, those vibrations would have also caused the microwave to move as well, which would have been a huge problem. Okay, so here's the next type of wave that we're going to create. We're going to be moving the slinky string back, but at the same time we're going to be moving it up and down. And the wave that we created looks almost like an S shape. So let's look at this wave in a bit more detail. We can see that the wave is moving in this direction, however the vibrations are not parallel like before, instead they are 90 degrees to the direction of the wave, or in other words they are perpendicular. This wave is known as a transverse wave. So a transverse wave is when the direction of the wave is perpendicular to the direction of the vibrations. And examples include electromagnetic waves such as light and x-rays, but also S waves, which are another type of seismic wave, and also, and also ripples on water are another type of transverse wave. Now one way to work out speed is to do distance divided by time. However, for waves, there's another way that we can work out speed, and that is equal to frequency times wavelength. But we want to focus on the second one. Okay, so here we have a transverse wave, and we're going to label the axes displacement on the y-axis and distance on the x-axis. Now remember, distance is measured in meters. So we can see that on this wave, the top parts are known as crests, or you can call them peaks, and the bottom point is called a trough. The height of a wave is known as the amplitude, and it's the distance from the baseline, which is the line in the middle, to the crest or trough. Now the next thing is wavelength. Now a wavelength is simply the distance between the same point on the wave. So for example, we can see that here we have from crest to crest, that distance would be one full cycle or one complete wavelength. Now it doesn't have to always be crest to crest, you could pick any point, for example, we could go from here to here, that would be one wavelength, or from here to here, or from here to here. Okay, now frequency is the number of waves per second, and this is measured in hertz. So if a wave has a 5 hertz frequency, that means 5 waves are passing a point every second. If it was 10 hertz, that means 10 waves are passing a point every second. Now KHZ means kilohertz, and we know kilo means a thousand, so if I have 3 kilohertz, that means 3000 waves per second. But we can go even higher than that. So what about MHZ? The M stands for mega, and it's worth a million. So 4 megahertz is equal to 4 million waves per second. Now the next thing about waves is that we need to know period. Period is simply the time it takes for one complete wave. Or in other words, the time it takes for the wave to get from here to here. And we're going to work out period by looking at frequency. Okay, so period is measured in seconds and frequency is measured in hertz. Now the interesting thing about these two is that if you know one, automatically you can work out the other. For example, if I know period, I can work out frequency by doing one divided by period. And equally, frequency to period is the same way. 
one divided by frequency gives me period. So let's say here we have three different periods for three different waves, and we want to work out the frequency of each wave. So let's start with the first one. We're going to do one divided by period, so one divided by 0 0.2, and that gives us five hertz, which is the frequency. Moving on to the next one, we're going to do one divided by four, and that gives us 0 0.25 hertz. And finally, for the last one, one divided by 10 gives us 0 0.1 hertz. We can also go the other way, from frequency back to period. All we have to do is one divided by frequency. Let's start with the top one again. One divided by five gives us 0 0.2. Perfect, we've got the same number that we started with. Let's go to the next one. One divided by 0 0.25 gives us four. And the last one, one divided by 0 0.1 gives us 10. Now, period and frequency are inversely proportional. What that means is if one of them goes up, the other will go down. So in this example, we saw that period was getting larger and as period got larger, the frequency got smaller. And had it been the other way, had period become smaller, frequency would have become larger. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.